Uh, it, it's over as far as the rainfall goes. It's over as far as the severe weather goes for us today, at least. Most of that now pushing down to the south. We started as early as about uh, I'd say about one o'clock yesterday afternoon. That's when we started seeing some of the severe thunderstorm warnings popping up to our west over into uh, our far northwest places like Dade Walker County into uh, Chattooga County into Floyd County and then eventually making their way down to the south. Caught a brief break for a little while and then we knew that front would have to move through the area and once that front got close enough we started seeing those thunderstorms really start to amp up a little bit. Ironically you know we talked about those storms last week. We knew the difference this week was that we didn't have the wedge that would be holding on and so that wedge broke down we had that warm moist air begin to move in we were between the warm and the cold front and so that really sparked off a lot of those thunderstorms our neighbors to the west under a high threat a high risk for severe thunderstorms and we saw that over into parts of Alabama where at least so far at least eight reports of tornadoes uh, and we saw some of the damage over there very devastating those thunderstorms and tornadoes held together making it over into our neck of the woods in fact the one that we were talking about here now where joe was moved into herd county just after about 11 o'clock maybe a little bit after 11 o'clock that started out in alabama uh, could be considered a long track tornado now one of the things we know about tornadoes is that they don't stay on the ground they tend to jump uh, in Jerry's report, he talked about how there was some widespread damage, but then you had houses that uh, you get a row of houses, at least where you got damage on each house. And then you get a house that seemingly wasn't touched at all. Uh, if you think about tornadoes, they're, they're almost like spinning tops. If you ever threw a spin, I know it's an old school toy, right? But if you ever threw a spinning top on the ground, when it first hits the ground, it kind of jumps around a little bit. And that's the same thing. Tornadoes don't typically stay on the ground. They jump around. All right. It's because of that jumping or lifting off of the earth's surface that we say typically when it strikes a structure it's going to hit the roof first right and really begin to pull that off uh, and then we start to see more of the damage begin to take place and so we've been seeing that consistently down here to the south christy uh you got more on the power outages so far this morning i do and i actually have some good news chesley it is getting better by the minute now that we have daylight crews are able to see a little bit better most of the severe weather is out of the area which means they can get in and start to fix and repair and restore these outages Right now, if we're looking statewide at all providers, there are still a little over 14,000 households without power. So it is um, still a pretty hefty number. But considering a couple of hours ago, we were sitting at more than 17,000 households without power. That's an improvement, I would say, wouldn't you? Most of those power outages are coming from Georgia Power customers. Right now, about 10,800 households. Uh, Georgia Power customers are without power this morning. But again, I keep refreshing this page and every couple of minutes, 100 here, 100 there get restored. So as you stay patient this morning, crews are working really hard. They brought in crews from other areas of the state that aren't dealing with as much damage as we are here around the metro to help uh, restore all of these outages. Still, the counties that are dealing with the most at this point, still Fulton County, about 2,900 households without power. Coweta County, you're down to about 1,800, about 1,900 households without power, at least for Georgia Power customers. Bartow County, still more than 2,000 households without power. But Henry County, good news there. We were sitting at 1,500 households without power. Now that number is down to just over 150 households. So crews really are working. You can see the progress that's that's happening this morning. It definitely helps when you've got uh, some, okay, it sounds like we have someone on the line with us right now. Uh, someone who is with Coweta Fayette County EMC. Uh, Shelly, good morning, thanks for being with us. Hi, happy to be here. Hey, so I know you guys have been out working since the middle of the night, even when it was dark. How were your crews able to, able to get out there so quickly to start helping restore power? Um, well, we, of course, we have standby crews that are always ready in case anything happens, like overnight and that kind of thing. And so we were able to get them out and get started once it was safe enough for them to begin working. Okay, and uh, Chelly, it looks like right now, uh, within the last 10 minutes at least, Coweta County has about 1,200 outages according to the Coweta Fayette EMC outage map. Um, also a few in Fayette and a few in Heard. Um, it, to me, it looks like Heard jumped up in the last hour. I is this a situation you're seeing where it could get worse in some places before it gets better? Um, it, it, sometimes it has to be that they have to isolate some areas to be able to do some work in that, and that may be what you're seeing in that. But our hardest hit area is definitely West Coweta. 
um, and that includes the areas of like Smoky Road, Corinth, J.D. Walton Road, Charlie B. Johnson Road, Bruce Jackson, Andrew Bailey, and Belk Road. Um, we know that there's significant damage in that area. Uh, they've already identified over 60 broken poles, and so a lot of debris that they're having to work through to be able to get to be able to make these repairs to. What exactly does it take to be able to make these repairs? Because it's not as simple as just connecting the power back on. When you've got a pole that is snapped in half, and you just said at least 60 broken poles, um, what does it take to actually repair that? So there's a lot of work that goes into it. First, you have to remove anything that's left from the, the damaged pole, and then, of course, you have to have the new pole reset it. Uh, that means digging the hole, getting it in there, um, setting up the framing for it, rewiring. Um, and, and what you're finding is a lot of the wiring is not reusable because it's all twisted up and damaged in other places. So it's basically like building places back from scratch. Uh, we are very lucky that we've been able to bring in additional crews from some of our sister co-ops. Um, including Snapping Shoals, Greystone Power, um, Southern Rivers, and, and Carroll EMC. So uh, we've got a bunch of feet on the ground um, and working to make those repairs as fast as possible. Uh, in addition to all the crews that, that came in, how many linemen would you say are out currently working to restore power right now? Um, I, I would say... Crews working in those areas, um, counting the ones that we have coming in from from outside help right now. Chelly, you went a little muffled there on the line. Can you can you say that one more time about how many linemen you think are out working right now? Sure, I think we have about 150 or so in the field right now, um, and that's including some of the ones that we called in from our sister co-ops that are helping us. Okay, got it. So right now, we just listened to a news conference from several public safety officials who said linemen are having trouble, at least in the Coweta County area, um, doing their jobs because people are out surveying the damage, trying to drive around them. Are, are your linemen having trouble? What would help us help them get the power back on? Uh, absolutely. We totally urge people to stay away from those areas if possible um, for their safety and for our crew's safety. Um, with, with any storm like this where you have downed lines, there's always the danger that they could still be energized even though they might be laying on the ground. So um, keeping people out of the way so that our, our crews are able to travel the roads and actually work in those areas um, and also for the safety of the people that are out there um, not knowing what they might encounter if they drive over these lines or reach out and touch some of those. It's just best that they stay away if possible. And I've been monitoring your map all morning long, so it looks like it is updating in real time. How many uh, households have you gotten restored overnight? Um, at the height of the outage, we had about 6,000 out, so we've made significant pro progress. We're down to about 1,200 right now at the last count, um, and it does update. So our members and anybody interested can check by going to utility.org. We have a live outage map that they can see um, the areas where, you know, like where the outages are and where people are working. Okay, wow. Thanks to the linemen who have been out there all night long um, working on all of this. And of course, here's the one question everybody wants to know if they still are without power. Do you have any estimate? time when all the households will have their power back? It's going to be a slow process today because of the time it takes to repair all the broken poles and that kind of thing. So if they're in that heavy hit area, um, it, it, it's going to be several hours. Um, but we will actually be out there and we'll be working um, along with our help that we have brought in until the last person is restored today. Is there any chance that we could go into the overnight hours and even tomorrow with people still experiencing no power? Um, there is a chance it could go into the evening. We're hoping that it doesn't go any farther than that. Okay, perfect. Um, Chelly Phillips with Coweta and Fayette EMC. Thanks so much for being with us and, and updating us this morning. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I hope all of your linemen stay safe. We very much appreciate them, and we know everybody wants to um, tell me again where we're going. We know everybody wants their power back on. That is for sure. All right, Lauren, tell me where we're going next. All right, Chesley, this is over. All right, all right, let's do it, folks. We've been out here warning you 
uh, what's been taking place. And, you know, Christy, I think a lot of people have heeded the warning. I think we got out of this early, uh, stating the potential for uh, the severe weather in our particular area. This has been two weeks, or well, at least last week, around the same time, and then again today, this one being a little bit more severe than the last one. But uh, I think people, especially our viewers, very weather wise, very weather wise, because this could have been a, a very terrible situation, especially with it happening through the overnight. This is not like what's that, what takes place out west over toward Kansas and Oklahoma where they have very flat land and you can see tornadoes very far off, that kind of thing. We have a lot of trees around. Plus, a lot of our tornadoes wind up being rain wrapped. And so seeing that at night uh, can, can really be hard. All right. Uh, and experiencing that at night can really be hard on us. You heard one of the uh, our interviewees say when, with, with Joe Ripley that uh, she was told to listen to what sounds like a train. Typically, when you hear those winds blowing back and forth, it sounds like a, a locomotive kind of a train sound. And so uh, typically when people hear that, they take cover. That's very wise, very wise. And I think a lot of people were doing that because we have so much damage and we haven't been hearing a lot of reports of injuries, which is a, a, as many people have been stay, stating on our show so far this morning, uh, calling it a blessing, right? You're looking at uh, the rains so far, pushing a little bit further down to the south. Here's our southernmost counties here. You're talking about uh, Putman, and ja Putman and Jasper County, uh, where we have in the southern portions of those counties, some very heavy rain coming down. The lightning strikes are starting to subside just a little bit, just a little bit, but we still have some lightning strikes around uh, down toward Red Oak. That's where it starts to get a little bit numerous, but that's heading a little bit further down toward the Macon area. Uh, up toward Covington right now, uh, into uh, Henry County. You got uh, some light rain around on I-75, down toward Locust Grove as well, over toward Spalding County, Griffith. You got some uh, light rain. That's going to continue. I think this rain, light rain, at least down here to the south, will continue off and on as we head through early afternoon. Our northernmost counties will begin to clear out a little bit, maybe get some sunshine in as we head into the afternoon. Concord, Barnesville, got the light rain. I think your severe weather threat is over for you as well. Uh, back off to the west of us, LaGrange, finally starting to see some of that rain uh, push down to, to the southern portions of Troop County. Merriweather County as well from the central and southern portions of the state, or the county rather, uh, you also are looking at that light rain. Numerous reports already came in uh, because this severe weather started, if you recall, yesterday afternoon in our area. We saw that hail first. Uh, a lot of folks sending us there was hail pictures, sending us hail video. Wind damage uh, was reported, of course, and then we had a couple tornadoes in the area as well. But again, so far, the strongest so far has been down here to the south, moving into Heard County first, over toward Franklin. That's where you see that little red uh, icon right there. Then over here toward the Noonan area, which is where we've been reporting so far this morning, a lot of the damage there, uh, as the sun has begun to rise, been able to see a lot of that and then heading over here toward, or at least ending over toward, uh, well, close to Peachtree City, uh, as you can see. And that started a little bit, or at least came into the state a little bit after 11 p.m. and really didn't wind down to closer to 1 a.m. Uh, and so this could have been, and, and so far it was proving to be, one of those long track tornadoes where it started out in Alabama and then moved into our state and kept going at least almost up into the central portions of the state, almost over toward the east. Uh, and so uh, at least it's the only one so far that we've heard a report of. There could have been more tornadoes in our area. And of course, the National Weather Service will get out and assess that and bring us the latest on that report. Judging based off of what we've seen so far, and we do have a meteorologist, uh, Melissa Nord, out there, we can tell at least that all the signs are there that we had a tornado. When we were watching it on the radar, the signs were there. Right. And so uh, at least we'll, we'll get confirmation a little bit later on, uh, later on this afternoon and tonight. And those reports may be ongoing because there's so much damage around. It's going to be a little hard to get to every single location. And so we'll be hearing about that as we go along. All right. I understand we're going to uh, 